with this. Rodrigo. Dest. What is Kulazeski doing? Why would Kulazeski do that? What is this guy's problem? Hey guys, welcome back. This is another installment for uh, the series that I'm doing with Tottenham Hotspur. This is the rebuild part three. Last season didn't really end too well. We made it to three cup finals. We were run up in all three of them. We also uh, missed out on the league to Liverpool by quite some. It wasn't a big gap, but yeah, they, they definitely deserve to win the league, even though we did go on a good run. So we come into the season with one trophy to our name. And uh, yeah, even though I've, I've actually got a trophy, I'm still being labelled as mini Poch. So uh, yeah, we definitely need to redeem ourselves this season. So in this video, we are going to go with the regular structure. We're going to start by talking about transfers, the new staff members, the tactics I used going into the season. And then we're going to talk about the runs that I had in all the competitions. And then we're going to have a review at the end. So at the end of last season, I did feel like we could make the most of all the information and all the stats and uh, all the facilities that we have off the field. And the best way I could have done that was the, having a bit of an overhaul again in terms of the staff department. So we improved the coaching, we improve um, some of the recruitment side, we improve some of the medical, uh, medical staff members. So as you can uh, see here, we do have the best coaching team in the league as we speak. So in terms of our recruitment team, we are third best. Uh, May and I have the best recruitment team according to the, uh, the, the data. Our medical team, I'm, a, I'm just going to assume we have the second best medical team in the in the league. Um, Manchester City are ahead of us. So yeah, we are taking off the field stuff really serious as well. Um, I may not show it on camera, but this is a really important factor when you are rebuilding a side like Tottenham. Because like it does provide a structure to your club. If there's a structure and a foundation being set off the field, then all the stuff on the field is going to come with it. So... Because of what happened last season, we did inject a few players into our side. We brought in a centre back, a backup cam. In fact, we brought in two centre backs and a backup cam. We got two permanent deals. And uh, yeah, we're going to take a look at that now. So, uh, Dejan Kulazewski, he joined for 30 million on a permanent move. Uh, Tariq Mitchell, we made that, that deal permanent as well. Uh, so, yeah, we got one of our main targets, which was uh, Arsene Zakarian from Dynamo Moscow. We bought him for 15 million, which is a, I think that's a still in my eyes. He's really good. We're going to take a look at his performance over the course of the season at the end of this, uh, by the end of this video, I would say. Andy Pelmard, we signed him for 18.25 million and he, it can potentially rise up to 21 million. So yeah, again, another still at the back, uh, centre back. And uh, he was a really good replacement for Eric Dyer. In fact... He played most of the games at the back. So, yeah, in terms of like the centre back partnership, he's at the heart of our defence. Kaiki. Kaiki? Kaiki? I'm not too sure if that's how you pronounce it. We signed him for 14 million from Santos. He's a Brazilian. Um, I was going to loan him back to his uh, Brazilian side, but I saw there was a few gaps and a few creaks at the back. And then we, we did get hit with injuries halfway through the season. And uh, he did join towards the end of December because he plays in the Brazilian league uh, so yeah he was a really good addition to the side he's 20 years of age and I feel like he's definitely going to grow into a world-class Premier League centre back in the future so in terms of players that we sold we sold Joe Roden uh, to Wolverhampton for 20.5 million we have another 20.5 million sell in uh, Steven Bergwijn to buy Leverkusen Giovanni Lo Celso uh, we struggled to move him on we didn't move him on until January and we had to cut the price for uh, Lo Celso, sold them to Leeds for 15 million and uh, yeah we have a few loan deals beneath us, Aaron Maguire, a young player he left for 61k. So we only made like 56 million out of like transfer sales. In terms of uh, money that was spent, 109 million, two of those signings were loan deals from uh, two seasons ago or last season but um Pretty much this season, we did spend, I would say, under 50 million, under 50 million on two good players and uh, three good players. Sorry. In terms of this, let's see. 
no, that's not included. But yeah, so yeah, we, we spent roughly 109 million all together this season. I would say my relationship with Daniel Levy has improved since me winning that first trophy in the first season. Uh, he has backed me a bit more. And uh, yeah, I feel like the backing's going to get even better uh, in the next coming seasons as well. We also need to add the commercial exposure that we got just from being in three finals as well. So um, yeah, I feel like this season we had no choice but to do even better than we did last season. So this is the starting 11 that I've mainly used this season. And these are the players that have been playing consistently throughout the season. And uh, we just literally just finished the season as well. So this is like literally fresh. So in terms of our tactics, we haven't dramatically changed it from last season. We still play extremely wide. We still try to play it into space because we have a lot of pacey players on the wing. Um, I think next season we need to start focusing on the wing as well. So I feel like we get most of our goals from there. And uh, if we are going to try to utilize the wide areas, I think it's best to actually focus on play down the wide uh, spaces. In terms of our passing directness, it's still the same, slightly shorter. Um, this, se this season, this has worked for me, working it, working the ball into the box. But I might try to experiment next season to see, um, yeah, to see if changing this up can improve it or maybe uh, just keeping it like this is probably the best uh, for the side. In terms of uh, out of ball possession, out of possession, we do tend to change it from time to time, even during the course of a season. I feel like if we are going through like a patch where we're conceding a bit too much, I feel like uh, defending higher is not going to be beneficial. And it also depends on the personnel in that back line as well. Because some players don't like to defend higher. Some players can defend with a standard line. Some people like to be a bit lower. But um, yeah, it's just all about trial and error. There's no perfect way to actually find out how your players should be playing or the style that you're supposed to be playing. Sometimes it's trial and error, especially if you haven't really played football manager before. But in regards to us, uh, we are doing well with a high defensive line and we're, um, we are trying to encourage uh, the players to, to defend uh, with a standard uh, line of engagement. There's certain games where we have to be a bit lower, especially against like a side like Liverpool or maybe a City. A side that's basically gonna outrun us or outplay us on the field. And uh, sometimes there's just nothing you can do about it. Yeah, we can take the the determination into the game but if your players don't match up against Manchester City or Liverpool on an individual basis or individual head-to-head -head, then uh, yeah it is going to be a really tough task so there are times where I'm positive there are times that I'm negative that's why we've got different types and different styles of tactics so as you can see here uh, we have a different version of it we have a more defensive version we have a backup version for when players are out Especially the midfielders. The midfielders get a lot of injuries, a lot of knocks. Especially the ball-winning midfielders. They're very aggressive. They fly into challenges, which causes more injuries. So, uh, yeah. When you're doing a save, I must say, you definitely need to have backup tactics. Whether you're using all three slots, at least use two. Because, yeah, you're definitely going to need it. And, um, yeah, it is quite useful in-game as well. So, this helps me switch up the style of play in-game but keeps the same formation whereas this one is just completely an emergency formation so uh, in terms of uh our youth intake it was bang average this season we barely got any players that were worth taking in um but the ones that we did take in the players that did stand out was kieran sese who's a top talent and uh according to dean rastrick uh and then we have an elite talent in jules kashala so kieran sese is a goalkeeper He's a sweeper keeper. At the moment, he's playing at the uh, current ability of 80. Uh, we don't really get to see his potential. And also, yeah, he's 15 years of age. I feel like the stats that he has for the for the age of him is quite outstanding. Um, maybe outstanding is, more, is a bit of a stretch, but if you take a look at his individual stats, these are really good for a 15-year-old. Once he's like 17, we should be seeing a bit more a bit more yellows, a few more blues around. And uh, yeah, I want to see the reds kind of like go down a bit. We're seeing a bit too much red, especially for like goalkeeping, like base stats, like rushing out tendencies. That's something that he does need to improve on if he wants to be a sweeper keeper. Throwing out would be really helpful because I want like quick distribution for my keeper. And um, yeah, I kind of don't, I'm not even going to pretend 
that I know what this means. Okay, so um I'm not too sure if that's good or bad, but yeah, he's less likely to do something out of the norm. Okay, so um, now that we understand that, we are going to move on to uh, Kashala. So Jules Kashala now, he's an inverted winger. He can play as an advanced forward, but we are going to encourage him to be an inverted winger, even though his best position is an advanced forward. At the moment, I'm trying to work on his endurance. My thing in my side is work rate. If you're not going to run yourself into the ground, obviously in a safe way, um, then you're kind of not a player that I, I want to play with or I want to use. So he's going to be an inverted winger. My wingers, they do need to get back and help defend defensively. And uh, I think the work rate is really crucial with that. But other than that, we do have a lot of positives to point out for him. Again, he's 15 years of age. His crossing's 11, dribbling's 12, finishing 10, first touch 13, heading 15, passing is 16. Really good for a winger. So if I wanted to play him on the inside, I could possibly try to push it a bit and play him on the inside. It's basically trial and error with this guy's development. But I don't want to make too much of an error with him because he has so much potential. We've seen it over the years. A lot of young players kind of like ahead of themselves, ahead of their, their age group. And then when they get to like an older, an older age, like an older age group, they're kind of bang average. And I'm trying to avoid this with some of these young players because I do want to be able to usher some young players in because that's the whole point of a rebuild. Uh, I want the club to be a bit more self-efficient rather than us having to buy players all the time. Okay, so in terms of loan moves, we had a few loan players or a few players that have gone out on loan, a few players that have shocked, have put in shocking performance out on loan, a few players that barely even got any game time. But I feel like it's best to just cover the positives. And uh, one of the positives is Troy Parrott. And uh, he went out on loan to AZ Alkmaar. So he had a really good time in the Dutch league, scoring 24 goals in 34 appearances and bagged himself three assists as well. And he ended the season with a 7.15 average rating. So yeah, Troy Parrott is someone that I, I will be assessing in the summer when we go on tour. He's definitely um, a really hot prospect. I've heard his name like ring around quite a bit as a United fan in real life. And uh, yeah, me and him have a really good relationship at the moment. In terms of his development, he can probably go out on loan one more time. If not, he can maybe push for the first team if he does really well, like I said in pre-season. So we're going to start by talking about the under-23s. Shocking, underwhelming. I mean, we don't have the best under-23 squad. I feel like these guys are just leftovers from, from players that weren't wanted in terms of low moves or players that just can't make the first team. So uh, in terms of our performance in the Premier League um, Cup under 23s and the Premier League division, we did poor. So in the league, we finished 12th. The Cup, we didn't even make it that far. Yeah, they didn't even qualify for the knockout round. Uh, so yeah, they fell short to Norwich under 23s and Arsenal's under 23s. However, we do have something positive to talk about when it comes to the under 18s. Last season, they won the Premier League, uh, the under-18s Premier League. This season, they sought out to go and retain it, and retaining it is exactly what they've done. And on top of that, they added the Premier League Cup to the, to the trophy cabinet. So they've done the double this year. We do have a really good crop of young players currently. I think uh, last season's good intake is uh, probably the, the influence on that. So in terms of our, our under 18 squad, it's a strong squad. We have a, a number of good players uh, with uh, great potential. In terms of our under-23s, it's an average squad. Like I described, there's a bunch of players that, that may have a bit of potential, but I don't think they're going to make it or make the grade at a side that's uh, trying to challenge for top four, challenge for trophies, and uh, yeah, just trying to play at a high level. So in terms of um, my squad, my relationship with the squad this season, I would say last season was a lot easier. I had uh, less issues. The first season it was kind of an uphill battle because I was unknown. I had no reputation, no experience in the managerial field. And some of the players used to try to use that to their advantage. But um, I signed one player and I was really happy with that signing last season. Made a lot of progression, scored a lot of goals last season, contributed quite well and played a massive part in us making it to three finals. 
Uh, so yeah, this season I was rather disappointed by his attitude. His work ethic in training as well was quite uh, was quite shocking. Even um, the way he handled like press conferences and stuff or interviews off the field was quite shocking. So we did have a bit of a rift. Uh, so yeah, I'm talking about Gabriel Barboza. So this season we didn't play him that much because yeah, he was busy like leaking stuff and causing problems, causing problems for the side, causing problems for me complaining the fact that uh he was second fiddle to one of the best strikers in the world he was in really hot form as well the form of his career and uh yeah he just couldn't quite grasp the fact that we signed him to help the squad out we didn't sign him to build around him so yeah he's been there two seasons and he's already down tall so please let me know in the comment section below what should i do with gabriel barboza should i move him off and uh probably make a profit on him because we got him for 23 million. We're guaranteed to get over 30 million for him because he is that good of a player. Okay, guys, we're almost halfway there. We're currently over 150 subscribers. If you guys are enjoying my content, please remember to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and drop some comments below. Also, hit the notification bell just so you're notified when I'm about to release a video. Okay, now that you've done that, let's get back to the video. So this season, we have four trophies to fight for. That's the Premier League, EFL Cup, uh, FA Cup and the Champions League. And uh, we did fight for all of them. We tried our hardest, we tried our best. So we're going to start off by talking about the EFL Cup and uh, how we got on. So in terms of the EFL Cup, in the third round, we uh, drew 1-1 in normal time, but beat Norwich on penalties. Uh, we also played against Everton in the fourth round. Again, we drew 2-2 in normal time and won on penalties. In terms of Derby County, we beat them 4-1 in the quarterfinals. Uh, we got goals from Madwiki, Kulazewski, Hoiberg and Kane. And, uh, West Ham United, we had them in the set, uh, in the semi-finals. First leg, we drew 1-1. Also, uh, Husum Oa, uh, he had to equalise after Luka Jovic helped West Ham take the lead. We also got a hat-trick from Dane Scarlett in the second leg. I mean, the youth are the future and I felt like in this game, it was all or nothing. We had Kane um, playing pretty much every game because Barbosa was dropped to the under-23s. And uh, it was January and Dane Scarlett just came back from his loan. I thought, let me just give this guy a shot. And boy, he, he did really help me out when I needed him. He came clutch. So yeah, hat-trick from Dane Scarlett helped us get to the final. So we ended up winning the Cowboy Cup. We beat Watford 3-0 at Wembley. So yeah, as you can see, we opened the score really early on with Harry Kane in the first minute. And it was followed up with a second goal from Wilson Hua. Uh, yeah, the 29th minute is when he got the goal. And then 84th minute, he kind of put the game to bed. The game was kind of put to bed after the second goal, if I'm honest with you. Watford didn't pop a fight. But yeah, we're going to take a look at some of the highlights right about now. Okay, so we already have a goal in the Carabao Cup final. So Son has the ball now. Uh, he passes it back into Arthur. He plays it into the center into Bentacu. He plays a nice ball into the box. And Harry Kane catches the ball on the volley. It's 1 0 to Tottenham. Hopefully, we can defend this lead. Wow. Kuluzeski. Come on. End product. What a goal. What a goal by Oa. We were really patient just now. 28 minutes in. And we're 2 0 up. Okay, we got a third goal. We finally got it. So, yeah, the ball comes forward. Has Kane. Hoiberg plays it forward into Oa. Or bears down on down on goal and puts it into the opposite corner to make it 3-0. There we have it. We are victorious at Wembley, defeating Watford 3-0 to win the Carabao Cup. My second trophy in charge uh, while I'm at Tottenham. Hopefully there's more to unravel. We still got a title race going on and I hope that we can go on a run in the Champions League. Okay, so this next part is probably going to be the shortest part out of all the competitions. So it's the FA Cup and uh, yeah, we drew against Liverpool. Like, it's really unlucky that we drew against Liverpool. Our title rivals last season, the team that beat us in the Champions League final. And uh, yeah, it's like we've, we've been put in a really awkward position on purpose, just so we can suffer even more. And uh, yeah, we did suffer. We suffered a defeat in the third round of the FA Cup. We lost 2-1 to Liverpool, where Trent, he opened the scoring in the 30th minute. Curtis Jones doubled up six minutes later. And Harry Kane, he tried to pull something back for us, but he just couldn't drag us to a, a comeback in the end. So last season in the league, we finished second and uh, we were five points behind Liverpool on the table. And uh, I did 
go away wondering how to change that and how to fix that. So yeah, the main thing that I noticed as well uh, at the end of the season is that we drew six games and lost six games. So my plan was next season was to try keep that to a minimum and uh, the, the main way to address that is defensively. So uh, I think last season, yeah, we conceded around 30 goals in the league and uh, we conceded five to Manchester United, four to Leicester City, three to Arsenal, uh, three to Brighton, three to Burnley, uh, two to Liverpool and yeah, the list does go on. So this season, we addressed everything well. Um, I think we did have a few poor results slip through the cracks such as uh, this 4-1 defeat against West Ham United and uh, that was quite recent if I'm honest with you that was when like the the season was kind of coming to an end but it's still there's still no excuse for like a 4-1 defeat against uh, your London rivals as well but yeah my main thing was to address the shocking results that we had and uh, that's exactly what we did we kept our concession down to a minimum uh, for majority of the season and we also went on to win the league as well so uh yeah not only we dropped the amount of uh, draws we had and the losses that we had we increased the amount of wins we had and we increased the points the the points deficit was five again but it was uh the roles have switched so we finished five points ahead of liverpool with 97 points and they had 92. So like I said, uh, we did need Harry Kane firing. As you can see, he got 25 goals in the league. He came third place to Mo Salah's 35, set, uh, third place to uh, Lukaku's 32. Okay, so last season in the Champions League, we suffered a real heartache in the final to Liverpool. We did go on a bit of a decent run. Um, we did have quite a few defeats in the Champions League, if I'm honest with you. The, gr the group stage wasn't that smooth sailing. I think we just about got out of that group and um, in terms of like the knockout phase we did get a draw that was kind of favorable for us in terms of the first knockout round however we did start having to like play bigger sized teams that could easily play us off the park we upset Real Madrid we also caused an upset against Man City however we just couldn't get past that final hurdle and Liverpool ended up beating us in extra time through a uh, and a Vanilson goal in the 112th minute despite Harry Kane's efforts in the 69th and the 73rd minute to get us back into the game but this year I did say it was going to be different last season I did say my players were going to be sick tactically the cohesion was going to be better and uh yeah I just I just felt like this season was going to be special and uh this season was special as you can see we didn't lose in Champions League once um, Feyenoord, Sporting, Club Bruges, uh, they had to bear the brunt of our really good form. Uh, we were outstanding, outstanding in the Champions League. That's all I can really say. So unlike last season, we did get a bit of a lucky draw uh, in most draws. I think I feel like the only side that could have beaten us uh, that was a bit more difficult than the, the others were Juventus. Other than that. I kind of cherish the, the draws that we got. So we got a Villarreal in the round of 16 where we beat them 4-1 uh, in the tie. We also beat Porto 3-1 in the tie as well in the quarterfinals. And then we had a Juventus in the semis. We beat them 3-1 as well. Uh, we drew 1-1 in the first leg. And uh, yeah, in the, in the final, this game is incredible. We are going to go into the highlights. Uh, but yeah, just know that our backs were against the wall and uh, yeah, the players that I expected to turn up just didn't turn up. We weren't playing football, we got played off the park and uh, it, it just got really difficult. We had a send and off just before extra time. I mean, everything was against us, but we're going to go into the highlights right about now. Uh, look at the control that Barcelona have over the ball. Mbappe, Jota really close really close just uh Barcelona have a corner we'll put in a Rajo hits the bar the ball's floating around the box oh what have you done what have you done okay so it's half time now and uh yeah it's still nil nil both sides pretty much have made this look like one of the worst finals in history so yeah the xg for Barcelona is 0 0.69 my xg is 0 0.34 uh yeah, we don't really have much possession, but 
We're not really being played off the park. Both sides aren't really creating enough chances. We're going to take a uh, look at the analytical uh, data. So the best performer for us is Hossam Oua. Uh, Harry Kane is having an off day. We probably need to find a way to implement him into the game. Try to get him involved a bit more. I think it's the fact that we aren't the team that have uh, most of the possession. I think if we have more of the possession, Kane is more inclined to be involved in the game. And uh, yeah, that's something we definitely need to improve upon in the second half. Uh, Sanchez into Emerson Royale. He gives the ball straight to Kylian Mbappe. He just runs down the middle, dinks the keeper. And uh, I think Ori Ariola, not Ori, Ariola gets a touch to that. Plays it on the inside. Diogo Jota. Come on, get this cleared. Please deal with this. Rodrigo. Dest. What is Kulazeski doing? Why would Kulazeski do that? What is this guy's problem? Okay, Oar is tired. So we're going to take off Oar. Bring a Zakarian. Change to a back five formation because of the sending off. And uh, we are going to be cautious going into this game. Going into extra time, I should say. Uh, we are going to be a bit more a bit more solid at the back get stuck in oh, yeah we definitely need to get stuck in I know it's probably um conflicting with what I'm trying to do but yeah tighter marking don't press too much okay so yeah we gotta be very tactical gotta take it to penalties if we don't take it to penalties, there's no other way we're going to win. We've not created any chances with the full 11 men on the pitch. Now we're down to 10 men. It's going to be really difficult now. Got to still think positive. So just slowly moving this ball back and forth on this right-hand side. Nice switch of play by Oliver Skip. Regrion takes the ball down. Oh, Regrion. I should have instructed him to do it earlier. Crosses. Oh, Zakarian has scored. Oh my God. We're down to 10 men and Zakarian has scored an extra time. The 98th minute. He catches the ball on a volley. Let's take a look at that again. Regrion, he just looked like he weren't going anywhere. I was just complaining about not having the instruction for them to whip balls in early. Ball comes in. The defender makes a mess of it. Scarlet just about gets it down into Zakarian and he volleys it in. I managed to secure a European title with Tottenham Hotspur within three seasons. That is rather impressive. So yeah, Harry Kane stepping up to lift the trophy. He had a poor game, but he's reaping the rewards. There we go. Tottenham Hotspur are the champions of Europe. Finally, last season, we had a lot of heartache, a lot of heartbreak, but this is our year. This is our year to shine Tottenham Hotspur on top of Europe. So uh, we are officially the second London side to lift the Champions League, beating Arsenal to it. Arsenal have been playing Champions League football much longer than Tottenham. And uh, the closest they've gone was uh, losing to Barcelona in the final in 2006. And uh, yeah, we've been to the final twice before we actually lost it. So Tottenham, um, I feel like we've done really well uh, in this rebuild. It's taken us three seasons to do it, but we've done it. Uh, this doesn't mean that the rebuild is done. We still have to retain it. We still have to show that this isn't a fluke. So uh, there will be another season after this. So yeah, don't worry. But in terms of like, um, yeah, the Champions League, again, it caught me by surprise. I was really shocked when I saw Sakarian score that. Sakarian has been fantastic this season. And uh, speaking of Sakarian, speaking of a player being fantastic this season, we are going to talk about the player individual performances. So we are going to talk a bit about the signings as well. We didn't get to talk about how they performed. So uh, Andy Pelmard, like I said, he was at the heart of our defence. He was a really crucial player. He had 30 appearances in the league. He scored one goal and had an average rating of 7.9. 7, um, his overall average rating, 7.0.6. He had 48 appearances altogether. So yeah, Pelmard. We signed him for 18.25 million. I feel like he's given us back uh, what we paid for him. In terms of Zakarian, we have to search for this guy. We are going to be a bit more detailed about Zakarian. So when it comes to Zakarian, he played 23 games in the league. Uh, he gave us seven goal involvements and five goals and seven, uh, two assists. Sorry, 6.93 average rating. So with him, I feel like he has to he had to adapt uh, because he's coming all the way from the Russian league. 
And on top of that, he is still young. He's 20 years old. And he wasn't playing every week. Uh, obviously, Hussam Or, he kind of like owns that number 10 position right now. But when Sakarin did come in, he did give us quite a few uh, solid performances here and there. We only got him for 15 million. So the fact that we got him for 15 million, he's quite young and he has high potential. I mean, that's probably re that's probably one of the best signings in the save so far. In terms of his individual ability, he has a good dribbling ability, not a nice first touch. He's really composed. That's one thing that really um, surprised me about him as well. He's 21 years of age. I got his age wrong. Uh, but yeah, it's the fact that uh, he's really composed for his age. His vision's really good as well. And um, yeah, the only thing that worries me is his work rate. Like I was explaining earlier with, uh, with uh, what's his name? So I forgot the young player's name. Uh, I think it's Koshala, sorry. Jules Koshala. Um, yeah, it's his work rate. We need players that are able to just run themselves into the ground. And uh, if we can't keep them on for a full 90 minutes or play them, uh, for 90 minutes, two games in a row, then it's kind of pointless me having them in the side or starting in the side. So this is one thing that's going to be a barrier for him. Because his uh, work rate isn't that high, he's not really that likely to start over Oar. Because if I keep Oar in the field and he has a decent work rate um, and he has good stamina by, I would say, the 70th minute, we're more likely to use that substitution in other positions. Whereas... If you're on number 10 and you're gassing out early, that's one substitution down. So uh, I like to keep um, a, sub a sub available just in case we need to make a tactical or an emergency tactical change. But yeah, I don't like to go into games handicapped is basically what I'm trying to say. But um, yeah, I feel like his development in one season has been really good. Uh, let's see within the next season or two how he gets on and then we could probably judge him overall as a signing. The thing right. is, a lot of players impressed me this season and the fact that we won the league, the Carabao Cup and the Champions League is inevitable that most of the players in the squad are going to be good in my eyes. It's just really hard to talk about each individual because, yeah, I don't want to take too much time on this video. But Madriki, he's slowly uh, showing us the potential, showing us what he's capable of. He's been really good this season, if I'm honest with you. Um, his attacking output is, has remained consistent. So last season, he uh, he gave us 8 goals and 5 assists. This season, he gave us 9 goals and 7 assists. So he has increased his attacking output in the league ever so slightly. In all competitions, he managed to bag uh, 10 goals last season and, eight, and uh, 8 assists in all competitions. This season, 12 goals and 15 assists. So you guys kind of get the gist on what I'm talking about. Noni Madwiki, again... Really good season. Um, I would say, again, or really pivotal in that number 10 role. I've mentioned him quite a few times already this episode. 13 assists in the league, one goal. And all competitions, 17 assists, six goals. So, yeah. Um, so far, my recruit, my recruitment has been good. Uh, barely had a signing where it's been a miss. Okay, so the next thing we need to talk about is the data hub. This part is really important for me. Is an important part of the review because this is the part that helped me win the Champions League this year because last season I analysed what was going wrong and I addressed it. So we are going to analyse what's going right and what's going wrong for us. So yeah, we are going to start off with attacking. Let's start off positively because attacking is always going to some, equal something positive because we are quite good going forward. Goals per game, 2.11. Uh, again, I mean... One of the best attacks were really lethal up front. I'm really happy that this is 2.11 because it kind of highlights what I've been talking about this whole episode. The attacks have been carrying us through a, a lot of uh, bad times, a lot of good times. Um, but in terms of uh, pass completion, we can improve that a bit. I am going to try to tweak the tactics a bit so our possession play is uh, involving retaining the ball, retaining possession. And making sure passes are making it to the target. I feel like um, because I asked them to play the ball in spaces. They are making passes or playing passes that are very speculative. So next season we may go with like the the kind of the, the conservative approach. Not too conservative obviously because we do love to score goals. But I do like to be a bit more possession based. Dribbles per game. So uh, I mean this isn't a worry. This isn't a worry because I like to keep the ball. If you're just 
out there dribbling at people, running at people, you're more likely to lose the ball because you're running at defenders. But at the same time, um, I still want it to improve a bit, just a bit, because we do have really good players like Kulazeski, Son, Madweke. Um, Oa's quite good at carrying the ball. Zakarin's a good dribbler as well. So we have really good dribblers on the side, but we're not really utilizing it enough. We can utilize it just a bit more. So defensively, uh, where do I start? Where do I start defensively? I mean, we can start positively. Let's just start positively with everything. Conceded goals per game or conceded per game is 0.71. It's below one. So automatically, that's a good thing. And uh, as you can see, uh, we are the best in terms of our average um, goals conceded per game in the league. And uh, I feel that's something that we don't need to improve on. If we can keep it like that, um, I won't say it can guarantee us a trophy or two every season, but it should definitely guarantee us the league because all of this is based in the league as well. But bear it in mind. So uh, this is an overall base. This is Premier League based. So if everything remains like this and uh, we won the league this year and we keep everything like down to minimum in terms of conceding goals we can go on to defend the title next year that's that's honestly my verdict that's my prediction that's my expectation because i've already seen it in the, the in the players this season i've seen what they're capable of in terms of like fouls made per game again like i said earlier on we have a lot of uh, ball winning midfielders that fly into challenges they cause harm to others they cause harm to themselves so this number is going to be high i mean i don't I don't, I don't hate it, I don't like it, but do I care for it? No, I don't, because it, it kind of works. Sometimes in football, you need a bit of shithousery, and that's just the personalities that we have in our side. We have Hoiberg, he's physical, um, Bentacore, he can get physical if he wants to. And um, yeah, it's just the nature of our style of football, and yeah it is a bad it is a bad side to the game but if we're using it to be a bit tactical i haven't got an issue with it interceptions now this is quite important because we do play with ball winning midfielders and if our interceptions per game aren't that high then it's not that uh then it's not like a good thing but in terms of like interceptions made it's not the best but it's not the worst it definitely can improve i feel like um we don't have great ball winners in our side like Benton Core he can easily be deployed as a deep line playmaker he can play in quite a few roles he's not the best ball winning midfielder um in the world he's the best in our side but not in the world so if we are going to go into the market to splash the cash or buy a player it's going to be for that role specifically and uh Hoiberg we don't really need to say much about him he's like a scattergun He's like, he's going to go, he goes off where he, where he does what he wants. Sometimes he's a ball in the midfielder. Sometimes he plays box to box. He just does what he wants. So um, those are like the two best players in our side in terms of ball winning. Um, after that is Oliver Skip, who I've used mainly as a box to box midfielder this season. Helmard, uh, he got a B plus. In terms of Sakarian, uh, he didn't play bad. He played decent for majority of the games. There was... Like, really important games where he played good. So, that's why, like, I kind of lean more to good. Because when I needed him, he did show up. He's the guy who scored in the Champions League final as well. So, yeah, he's kind of... He's kind of given himself, like, a a, a good resume uh, for his first season. In terms of uh, the players sold, uh, we got a D for Bergwijn. I'm assuming because of the transfer fee. D for Lo Celso. Uh, C plus for Rodon. Daniel Levy, yeah, he just wants money for low moves, but these players aren't good enough to warrant money. Like, what? Let's move on. <laughs> so, uh, in terms of um, the competitions, we got an A-plus in the Premier League, so we overachieved. They just wanted us to qualify for the Champions League, and we did one better. We got them the league itself, and uh, let's take a look at the Champions League. Again, overachieved. Quarterfinals was the expectation. And uh, being the winner was the final position. So, yeah, we played really well there. FA Cup, <sighs> disappointed. We got a D, D for disappointment. And then uh, we also got a C plus for Carabao Cup. C for Carabao Cup. 
Okay, yeah, we were winners. I feel like uh, we played really well and we did rotate for majority of the competition as well. So uh, that's why we ended up drawing against Norwich and Everton and stuff like that. I don't know. This, realistically, this could have gone up. I think, uh, yeah, this definitely could have gone up. We definitely need to improve this. I feel offended that this has like, gone down a bit, but it's only by a bit. Uh, in terms of broadcast revenue, uh, it's gone up by 10 million. So we've got 111 million sponsorships. This is the bread and butter sponsorships. This is really important because this is going to allow us to have a bigger budget next season. So um, yeah, 161 million. Same competition prize money as well. So we got 134 million for that one. Last season was 120 million. So yeah, shirt sales, 366,102 shirts were sold. Uh, Son because of the korean market the best selling shirt i mean that just shows that we kind of do need to do better in terms of like the profile players that we sign but we are running as a really efficient club so i don't want to go out and make a really big shock star signing unless it makes sense for the squad but um maybe to maintain the level that we're playing at is probably something that i may need to do at least once or twice um, every three seasons or so so um yeah or he's one of the guys that sell a lot of shirts same with uh, Kulizewski, Loris and Kane so um not really not really any young players in that in that little section here Kulizewski has been snubbed in our best side wow Madwiki he's made it um so I was kind of right to highlight Madwiki then to be honest he had a really good season 27 goal involvements in all competitions um yeah, Ariola's in the goal. We have a Royale at the back with Sanchez, Pelmard, and Reguillon. I'm not gonna lie, I preferred Mitchell to Reguillon. In the midfield, we have Benton Core, Arthur, and Or. Towards the end of the season, I did use Winks a bit more and I used Skip a bit more than Arthur. I think Skip is a better player overall than Arthur on the game. Don't belt at me in the comment section. I don't watch Arthur in the real life. I'm not gonna pretend to watch him. I sometimes catch Skip when Tottenham play him. So don't think this is real life. This is football manager. So yeah, I prefer uh, I prefer Skip to Arthur. Um, but Arthur, he played more games. It's just that Skip, it, it, got, it, it took some time for me to know what Skip's best role was. I was deploying him as a ball winning defender, ball winning midfielder, sorry. But he was better as a box to box midfielder. So play awards, this is quite important for the players. So fan player of the season, Harry Kane, young player of the season, Madwiki, signing of the season, Andy Pelmard, uh, goal of the season, Edson Alvarez. I probably skipped that game because I didn't see that goal. Okay, <laughs> top goal scorer, uh, Harry Kane, 36 goals and all comps, most assists is Hussam Oar. Okay, 17 assists. And then we have a uh, player of the match awards, uh, was six, uh, six player of the match awards for Harry Kane. Uh, high average rating. High average rating. Alphonse Ariola 7.2. And then we have the most passes completed per 90. And that's uh, 77 uh, completed. And then we have Pierre Emil Hoiberg. Uh, record breakers. Most assists in a, uh, by a player in a season. Hussam Oar. Top class. Top class. He was worth all the money. That we shelled out from last season. I mean, yeah, like I said, he's improved. He's improved upon his numbers as well. Uh, most league goals by a player, 228. It's Harry Kane. Okay, so we're going to move on. History in the making, according to the headlines. And that is where we are finished. Yeah, um, in terms of the players that we're going for, we're going to be going for uh, another midfielder. Uh, we are going to make sure that uh, they either play box to box or ball winning. Oh, I might even switch up my tactics. I might even switch up my tactics. Well, we are definitely looking for a central midfielder. We are looking for a goalkeeper. Uh, we are potentially looking for a left winger. I don't think Brian Gill is good enough to replace Son. And uh, also, we do need to look for a left back because Reguillon is he's really suspect, if I'm honest with you. He, he's very up and down. I don't trust him whatsoever. And he's one of the guys that always complains about not getting regular starts, even though he's not a star player. But yeah, 
that's where we're definitely going to end it. We're definitely going to end it here. And uh, yeah, just get in the comment section below. Let me know what you think of my performance this season. Let me know what you think of my signings and how they performed. Let me know um, of my weaknesses on the field. Uh, anything that you can spot that I may not have seen. Uh, let me give me suggestions of uh, those position players in those positions that I said I'm targeting. Uh, again, I remind you: goalkeeper, midfielder, a left back, and uh, possibly, possibly a striker. But we do have Scarlet and Parrot, and uh, but Gabriel Barbosa just probably just. In fact, let me know what you think about Gabriel Barbosa. Do I move him on? Do I move him on uh, this season or at the end of next season? Uh, maybe see what his vibe is like during the next season. And if he's poor, just sell him in January in the middle of the season. Also, it doesn't even have to be directly about the game. It could be about how I presented the video. Did I miss something out? Uh, do you not like the way I structure the video? Do you not like the way I lose eye contact and I don't stare at the camera like this? Like, give me feedback on anything. I'm open to actually uh, res responding and reading your comments and uh yeah it's not that deep it's not personal it's just it's just a video if you enjoyed this video please remember to leave a like subscribe to the channel if you're new drop some comments below and like i said at the beginning of the video to support the channel just check out uh, as much content as you can from my page so if you're into football manager check out my other save with manchester united is if this is your first time clicking on my video Check out my other um, my other installments with uh, Tottenham Hotspur, just so so this episode gives you more of a context to what's going on. So yeah, check out my my FIFA videos as well. So if you're into FIFA, check them out. Uh, if you're planning to start from all the way to the beginning uh, from season one with that save, I must say like you're probably gonna have to enjoy a lot of like quality poor quality videos. Like I think the quality gets better uh, from I say season three or four. Uh, season 5 is definitely better quality in terms of the video so I'm just trying to give you guys the best experience possible but yeah I'm, I'm done waffling now I'm going to let you guys go I hope, uh, hope to see you guys for the for season 4 I hope to see you guys for the, the season 2 rebuild for um, Manchester United and uh, yeah I hope I won some of you guys over by uh, getting you guys to subscribe by the end of this video also drop a like I've said that already goodbye peace <laughs>